for coming. We're going to be talking, uh, well, I should first of all confess that uh, as a moderator, I feel rather ill-equipped for this session because, uh, you know, we're talking about the fascination with Calcutta's underbelly. And as uh, you know, someone who unfortunately won a good conduct medal in school, I feel very ill-equipped to talk about the underbelly and much more equipped these days after coming back to Kolkata and having rice twice a day to talk about a growing soft overbelly rather than the underbelly, but I will, I, I will do my best. Um, so I, I thought we'd just plunge right into the conversation. You know, India Azra's book, Grand Delusions, is just out, and Jayanth Kripalani's New Market Tales came out last year, right? Yep. It came out last year, and some of you might have seen the uh, a version of it uh, in front of the New Market Clock Tower earlier during this festival. But I thought since both of you have written books that are set in and about Calcutta, neither of you actually live here anymore. So I thought I'd start by asking you, when you come back to Calcutta, are there, are there certain rituals, are there certain things that you feel like, other than visiting people, that you feel like you must do when you return to Calcutta? No. None at all. What about you? Well, I, I mean, the sort of, I keep the visiting people on a minimum, but uh, I, I, I tend to go to the most un-Calcuttan place uh, of them all, which is sort of Park Street, and I'll explain that why, because, uh, so the Park Street for me is what, when I was living in Kolkata, it was the least Kolkata thing for me personally. So I keep going there, despite saying I will not go there this time. So that's yeah, it. in fact, in your book, you know you that Park Street has shifted to Lansdowne Road. So I know, but I'm, a, new Park Street, I'm a bit no? anachronistic about ah. things. So I keep going to the old town. Ah, the, the old town, that, because in your book, you write about how you never really used to go to someplace else. I mean, well, partly because someplace else was moderately new when I sort of left Kolkata. But, uh, I mean, someplace else was also a place I've started going only after I left Kolkata. Because strangely, uh, it's a bit of both. Uh, uh, so I, give, I get the luxury of not going to Calcutta and the luxury of going to Calcutta when I'm there. I'm going to uh, just add to this a little bit. Uh, I, I'm going to probably get myself disenfranchised as a Calcuttan or ex-Calcuttan by making the next few statements. So please do forgive me. But uh, yesterday I, I uh, came back from Shanti Nigetan. I'd gone to visit Shanti Nigetan to see a school there. And I, on my way back, while I was crossing uh, uh, the, the Howrah Bridge, I th remembered something that I had read that is a gentleman called Stephen Wright, I think, had written. He was an, an army uh, officer in the Second World War. And when he landed uh, by boat on the River Hooghly, he said, uh, uh, the River Hooghly is the asshole of the world and Calcutta is 60 miles up it. <laughs> and uh, I had a brief uh, 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 sense of, you know, uh, uh, feel one, one being one with him. It also that defines what the underbelly is, doesn't it? I mean, yes, well, you know, that's the other thing about Calcutta I need to talk about, the underbelly. What is the underbelly of Calcutta? I was in a meeting recently in Bombay where they were discussing uh, that uh, the fact that uh, Dharavi is the largest slum in Asia. And they say it so proud, you know, Dharavi, largest slum in Asia. And, you know, I was thrown out of that meeting because I said, no, I think you're wrong because Bombay is the largest slum in Asia. And uh, Calcutta, un unfortunately, is an underbelly now. Yeah. I can't think of a an underbelly. Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, I think Calcutta is like a cow. It has sort of multiple stomachs. So there's no, I mean, it, it sort of enters into a particular d uh, compartment of the stomach, which I would call, uh, for the lack of any sort of single word, uh, South Calcutta, <laughs> and uh, then it sort of uh, sort of peters away to various. We'll, we'll get into this South Calcutta, North Calcutta, because I have been in conversations with the and you know random British person is sitting there and in, is trying to explain North Calcutta versus South Calcutta. But for you, Jayant, growing up, did this whole North Calcutta, South Calcutta thing mean anything? You bet. I preferred the uh, architecture of North Calcutta to South Calcutta any day. I prefer the streets of North Calcutta to Central Calcutta and South Calcutta. Um, they were far more exciting. They were... F uh, the theatres were there. Uh, had a lot of fun uh, visiting the theatres there. 
and uh, watching absolutely brilliant uh, theatre sometimes, and sometimes a lot of garbage, but you know, that comes with the territory. Um, so uh, uh, I would, any, I wish I had been born in North Calcutta, frankly, you know, and not the new market. Maybe my book would have been different. So I come from obviously a certain advantageous position because I was born kind of there. And, uh, but I think there's a sort of mixture of envy and derision that we used to have towards you uh, in terms of you know, these two sort of departments of the stomach that I'm talking about, which I'll talk about later. But uh, I think coming back to underbelly, belly, overbelly, um, I think there's a strange thing about, I mean, what is the underbelly? I think, as you said, I mean, there's no sort of underbelly, overbelly. It's just like one sort of two-dimensional stomach. I mean, look at Park Street, for instance. I mean, you have the, again, someplace else in Park Street, the whole history, 60s, shrinkers, and you have, you know, uh, the dark side, uh, the Sith Lord side. Uh, so, uh, But since you brought up Park Street, one of the things that a lot of you are probably have seen in this, this year, for, or rather now last year, during Christmas, there's been sort of a whole new sort of Christmas carnival thing being restarted in Park Street. Has and it always been there? I don't know. Yeah, 32 was, years I mean, ago, it was but there. It, but it has become like a Durga Puja kind of version of it now. I think it's a sort of a more strong gesture uh, as opposed to pr probably what was there. I mean, I'm, I, I, I might be sort of a bit lagging in terms of sort of time because I was a sort of 80s kid, grew up in the 90s. But I think Park Street was always bright. And, you know, like moths to a flame, bright was good, right? So, um. Okay, we've been bad mouthing Calcutta. We started off doing this. But I think, you when know, as uh, Coco Chanel said, you know, people think a lot of things about me. I don't think about them at all. And Calcutta is a bit like Co Coco Chanel in that respect. It, you know, she doesn't really care about what, what we think. But what Calcutta is, I think, all about, at least the underbelly, uh, I think you're referring to the the pimps and the prostitutes and the drug peddlers and the the, the whorehouses uh, that I come mm -hmm. from, right? In my book, yeah. But you know, the the, the fact of the matter is that these guys who who became pimps and prostitutes and and uh, we used to fly kites together as children. Mine was an accident of birth, as was theirs. I could have been there. So that's why I, I never thought of that as an underbelly. Um, they were they were one of us. I, my wife, who's in the audience here, when we first uh, got married, within a week of our, we were walking down Free School Street, and there was this guy who was uh, uh, peddling his wares, as it were. You know how they go: Sindhi, Punjabi, Gujarati, Marathi, Satra Salga, Thara Salga, Unni Salga, Jobi Mangta Milega, and he broke mid-sentence and said, "Hey, Jen, how are you?" And plunged toward my feet, and then he said, "Hey, who's this?" So my wife was quite scandalized, and I said, hey, you know, this is my wife. And he said, Bhaviji, and he leapt onto the floor and touched her feet. So this kind of thing happens all the time, uh, happened all the time to me in the area where I live. And so I find it difficult to think of it as an underbelly. Yeah. I, I also think that, you know, I mean, the, a lot of literature written about Calcutta has been about the underbelly. It's almost like an underbelly tourism kind of situation where... I think the thing that is missed out is the middle belly or whatever, thorax or whatever part of the body you sort of decide to. I mean, we have the sort of, uh, sort of high culture or whatever you call it about Kolkata, which is mm. out there. Which is coming out of our loudspeakers and yeah, yeah. traffic and lights all yeah, the time. Yeah, and then you have these sort of, uh, sort of uh, Kaligat uh, and then um, Shonargachi sort of journalism books and all that. I somehow feel that both are sort of well-documented or sort of well-captured or captured... Somehow, I mean, uh, talking too much about the underbelly is sort of uh, forcing yourself into a different kind of cliché. Uh, that's what I think. So, for, so now we've established that Calcutta is a cow named Coco Chanel. But uh, w so when you decided to write this book, Grand Delusions, were you like really conscious about what middle belly as it were or what that you wanted to really explore in this book see earlier on uh, i mean the title itself grand illusions i initially wanted to call it interpreter of maladies stories from kolkata uh, bengal and beyond but apparently somebody sort of wrote that kind of book already um so i decided to call it grand illusions because simply i see it even when i was living there as a sort of subject and um, Yes, I was 
kind of aware that there's this whole body of literature. I think there are exactly 8,042 books written on Kolkata over the last 62 years. 44. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of things which I uh, sort of consciously avoided. Um, there's a paragraph on Mother Teresa because there are better books on Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa speaks better on Mother Teresa still. Um, so I just thought that I'll avoid what I thought were cliches. Unfortunately or fortunately, uh, this is a very subjective book. So when I talk about cliches, these are probably cliches to me. So for instance, I, I mean, I, I... And you just, sorry, you didn't get any pushback from people say like, oh my God, you've written this book about Calcutta and there's not enough of Mother Teresa. In no, it. I think I got one which was uh, essentially saying, but you don't have the picture of Victoria Mem Memorial on your cover. So, I so think you said, I would launch my book at the Victoria Memorial. Yeah, I, Happy? Said, yeah, I said, yeah, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I must tell you, uh, when, when I was uh, going through your book, you've got a lot more than Calcutta. You've got Calcutta's, um, yeah, the base is Calcutta in, in this thing, but the way you uh, step out of Calcutta, you go to uh, um, uh, uh, Nandigram, Nandigram, and you go to Singur, and then you go to all the other places around. Yeah. Of course, the, the center is Calcutta, sure. but the, the way you explore, the, the way that affects Calcutta and the way Calcutta has affected those uh, political situations and business situations sure. is what really... No, see, for me, I, I, I think uh, from what I've read about Cal Kolkata, especially books in English, they sort of framed Kolkata in a very sort of a city kind of way. But, I mean, when I'm living or when I used to live here or when I, used to, so when I come here, it's sort of the edges are sort of blurred, they're bleeding uh, into Bengal. I mean, frankly, I mean, I think there are books which sort of hint at that, which like there are a lot of people who do what we call in Bangla, daily passengery from outside Kolkata. Uh, there are a lot of people, a lot of Calcutta is Bengal, but that's the strange thing about Kolkata. It tries to be a sort of isolated island, which is not Bengal. I find it fascinatingly ridiculous that we don't have another city town sort of which can sort of replicate a city town, metropolitan city, despite Shiliguri apparently being one. Um, Jens, what about you? When, when you started this book, New Market Tales, was it one story that you had in mind and the other stories kind of grew and clustered around it or how did it happen? No, I had nothing in mind. It was meant to be, it was written initially, I have to confess, 12 or 15 years ago for television. And we almost uh, made it into a television program, and that didn't happen, so I just let it ride. And then about two years ago, when I was sitting around at home, and I started thinking of it as short stories, and that happened. So essentially, I didn't really think of, of uh, that I'm going to write. That's the subject I know best. I was born and brought up there. So. And so what was it like for you then when you s stayed some part of it in front of new, you did new market tales in front of new market? What was that like? Oh, yes. Uh, hmm. I think, did anybody see that? I, it'd be better if, if, if you talked about it than I did. I, I was scared shitless is the best way to put it. Uh, because we were seating about, I think, four or five hundred people. I have a member of the cast over there also. who um, uh, And there were a thousand people there, at least. Uh, five hundred without tickets and the rest maybe with, I'm not too sure. Uh, it was exciting. But it was scary as hell, and would I do it again? No, I wouldn't. Uh, it's, it's a little too frightening. It was scary because of the number of people crushing... No, 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 that... Nah, nah. nah. it was just scary in a... In a, in a uh, who, who the hell are you to come and perform uh, over here kind of way, you know? Uh, I'm used to... In, yeah, I can, you know, uh, perform in a village square where it's, you're comfortable, you're talking to people. But over there, that was a bit Expo too huge for me. Yeah. Yeah, for um, one of the things when, uh, when Jayant brought up to Nandigram, I think uh, I thought was really intriguing in your book. You, you, and this is a section where you're talking about the uh, Nakshals uh, and all of that, which is intrinsically always part of a Kolkata story. And I'll just quote something from it where you say, Kolkata was quickly cured of its Nakshal ailment but something entered the bloodstream of its political culture that made it especially impervious to the plight of individuals and beholden to ideology and a cause. 
violence was hardwired into the Bhadralok politics of the left and it remains integral, if more visible, in the post-CPM landscape under Mamata Banerjee's Trinamool Congress government. Could you talk a little more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, the first time I went to Alimuddin Street, uh, this was uh, quite some time ago, and, um, you know, uh, you have uh, sort of theoretical associations with uh, Nokshalbari, uh, communist uh, Bengal, and it was uh, one of the most gentrified buildings I've ever been to. Uh, it, w it looked like, uh, I forgot the Sherlock Holmes club that he, Moriarty used to go to, uh, when nobody spoke, and that was the whole thing, everybody was reading newspapers, and for me, the headquarters of the sort of the Communist Party of India, Marxist uh, government in Bengal, Alimuddin Street, a few sort of minutes away from here, was an incredibly gentrified place, which didn't rhyme with, you know, whatever, the Carter, as they call it in a short form. I also s sort of have seen that, I mean, uh, Kolkata for me has, uh, because of circumstances or whatever, I mean, I have a sort of schizophrenic relationship with it because I have this para bondhu and school bondhu thing. So like the Calcutta was school bondhu. I went to St. Xavier's and my para is Belegata. So I sort of grew up in this sort of a, I think, kind of healthy kind of a sort of diatonic kind of situation in which uh, I saw that um, the Calcutta, uh, which whether it's Kipling's or whether it's Jeffrey Morehouse's, was not getting featured. Uh, it was actually sort of more um, you know, uh, ghost stories from Bordhoman. Uh, 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 and then this, I mean, I, I, I joked about sort of interpreter melodies earlier, but I think one of the, and I keep on repeating it in a sort of facetious way, but, you know, the biggest sort of diasporic tale is a, a, actually from, you know, Uttar to Dokkin, in which you move from a crumbling house to an apartment. Uh, and that's all happening in Kolkata. It's a sort of closed universe sometimes. Uh, people, and then there's this sort of additional thing about like Kolkata is connected to sort of London and America and somehow, I think that has changed by the way over the last 10-15 years. I mean more people in Jadapur University are speaking Hindi than goddamn us pretending not to know Hindi. Yeah, long live <laughs> Hindi movies. Yeah, for that. Yeah, long live <laughs> Hindi movies. I wanted to just add to something that you were saying about Alimuddin Street. You know, I think uh, along the way, maybe, hey, look, listen, I'm not any great intellect or intellectual. I just tell stories, but I do, I did get the feeling that the, the Communist Party, the CPIM, wasn't really either a Communist Party or a Marxist Party. It was a very Bengali party, yeah, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, the, uh, and everyth party, yes, yeah. and everything that went, so, you know, there I completely agree with uh, what you're saying. And there's a lovely description of what happened in Ali Muddin Street on the day they lost the election, mm -hmm. you know. And that's sort of uh, when, when, when I was reading that paragraph, I thought, you know, this looks like a Puja Pandal the yeah. day after, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Bhashan hoi gaya Bhashan hoi gaya Well, but since you brought up that, I, I don't know if either of you saw this Sunday uh, the, in the Times of India, there was a piece by Chondo Nundi. I don't read the Times of India uh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. in it, he said, he talks about this whole Bhadralok thing in Kolkata. And uh, I noted it because I thought maybe it would come up in our discussion. And he writes, as power shifted in dramatic fashion from one end of the political spectrum to the other with the Trinomul Congress now representing the new subaltern elite, the Bhadralok siege mentality has reinforced within his troubled walls. He finds Mamuta's illiberal ways a more frightening replication of the politicization of the police, civil administration, schools, universities, and hospitals, sapping the residual institutional vitality that was left once the left was vanquished. And then he talks about the Bhadralok reticence in reclaiming the political space. Thoughts? Well, I think, I mean, for better or worse, and I'm honestly being sort of apolitical in this context, uh, I think this is the Bengali, uh, sort of Bengalization, not Bengaliization, sorry, Bengalization of Kolkata. I mean, it's just that there was a sort of a, um, there was a, there remains a sort of a very sort of strong theoretical division between Kolkata and the rest of Bengal. 
Um, again, whether for good or bad, and in this case, I, I, I'm sure he does. He means it negatively. That sort of that sort of um, partition is sort of crumbling. Uh, I, I personally think it's a sort of a perhaps a sort of a you know that uh, ink drop finally sort of uh, spreading into the water rather than you know. Um, so that's my thought about it, and I I, I definitely don't think that um, what he means uh, the whole business about politics entering every facet of, uh, of, of, of society or life in even Kolkata is a Trinamool invention. Uh, I was here and uh, it's everywhere and I mean it was, whether it's in education, whether it's in sort of, uh, uh, whether it's in sort of culture, that incredibly immaterial thing that anyone can mold into anything, it was it was a CPM sort of. I I think uh, it's like a condensation of what the CPM did is sort of being done in a kind of different format. Well, I th I think that you know uh, until you stop eating bhat and going to work, you're going to be the same. You know, you can't eat your bhat at, at ten in the morning and then go to work. Nothing is going to change. Then you're going to be oti I'm ah. afraid you're going to be. <laughs> so you, can't, you can't have your bhat and eat it too. <laughs> Um, I thought it might be a good moment, you know, every time I go back and forth, everyone has this story that they would share, which is like, you hear a story and say like, oh, this is an only in Kolkata story. And I, I thought...